Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Wonderful. Welcome to the UEA Christmas Lectures. I'm Professor Matthew Woodcock. I was born in Norwich and went to school here. And I work in the School of Literature, Drama, and Creative Writing here at the university. Now, a big part of my job involves reading and researching old books, old records, and old documents about Norwich. I'm particularly interested in old Norwich, very old Norwich. And today, we're going to be looking at an event that took place in Norwich a very long time ago. We're going to be going back 440 years to the year 1578. What year are we going back to? 1578. OK, I want you to remember that date. We're going to be talking about that a lot. Now, we're going to be accompanied on our journey back in time by my fellow researchers, Danny and Emily. They're going to be uh, drawing volunteers out of the audience at certain parts of the lecture. So uh, look out for them. Now, we're going back to a time in which these two famous people lived. Can anybody tell me who either of these two people are? Hands up. Yep, shout it out. William Shakespeare here on the right, yep. Yeah. In the red there, in the middle there. Queen Elizabeth I, fantastic. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth I on the uh, left there. Elizabeth Tudor, and the period we're going back to is known as the Elizabethan, I suppose the first Elizabethan age, or indeed the Tudor age. And we're going to be looking at the symbol of the, uh, the Tudor reign, the Tudor rose, a little bit later on today. And then on the right here, William Shakespeare. Now, has anybody seen or read any of his plays? That's a good number of hands. You're in my good books already. I look forward to seeing you when you come to university to study more William Shakespeare. Now, we're going to be going back, as I say, to the year 1578 and exploring what happened when Queen Elizabeth came to Norwich. So what did Norwich look like back in 1578? Well, we're used to, uh, we're used to what Norwich looks like now. This is, uh, this is Norwich now. This is modern Norwich. This is the Norwich that you know. Now, are there things in this lovely photograph that you recognize? What have we got here? The cathedral, yeah, with the, uh, the pointy spire right in the middle there, yep. Anything else? Shout them out. The castle, yep, you can see that just on the left there. The city hall with the clock tower there, very good. What else can we see? Hand up in the middle there. The other cathedral, the Roman Catholic Cathedral, on the right there. There's a lot of buildings there. Good. Now, what did Norwich look like back in 1578? Very, very different. Now, there's various things that we can recognize here which are the same. We can recognize that there is, uh, we can see the castle there. We can see the cathedral here. We can see the marketplace here. But the one thing which is different, or one of the main things which is different, well, for the start, there's no cars, there's no city hall, uh, there's not as many buildings. But we've got running around the, the city here, the city walls. Now, some of you will have seen bits and fragments and ruins of the city walls as you've walked or driven around the city. The city wall also has these lovely uh, gates uh, going through it, and we're going to be talking about what happens when Elizabeth I walked through one of those gates. So Norwich looked very different. Um, you'll also see in the top corner here, there we go, the arms of the city of Norwich, the badge consisting of the castle, and underneath it, the lion. Now, you'll see this badge all over the city. I want you to try and sort of find out how many places you can see this badge when you're walking around today. You'll see it on flags, you'll see it on see it on bins, you'll see it on buildings, you'll see it, you'll even see it on the Norwich City football crest, which we might be looking at in a minute. Uh, so when you're walking around next time, see how many times you can see that badge, that crest of our city. Now Norwich in 1578 was the second biggest city in England, and it had about 16,000 people here, which is uh, that's, that's quite a lot. The, the first, uh, the largest city in England at this point was, you've guessed it, 
London. Very good. Another thing that's particularly important for us to remember and really to think about at this period is that in 1578, nearly one third of the people, of the citizens of Norwich, were Dutch and French speaking refugees who had come to Norwich fleeing religious and political persecution from their homes in Europe. And we can see a map here of the kind of areas of Europe that they came from. The first arrow, the top arrow, uh, shows that they're coming from the Netherlands, from Holland. And they also came from the area that we now call Belgium. And uh, the refugees, as I say, came to the city. This is a group which are commonly known as the Strangers. Now, you may have heard of a place in Norwich called Strangers Hall, which is a really, really good museum. I very, very much recommend that. Now, it's called Strangers Hall, as this was the place where the refugees, those Dutch and French-speaking refugees, came to visit. This is where the strangers lodged when they first came to town. So nearly a third of Norwich's population in 1578 were strangers. So I wonder what this might look like. Now, if you have a look under your desks in front of you, some of you, hopefully a third of you, have a look under the desks, you'll feel under there. Now, a third of you will hopefully find a card saying, well, what does it say? What's up? Welcome, stranger, indeed. Have a feel under those desks, see whether you've got one. If you have one of these cards, wave it in the air and shout, welcome, stranger. Welcome, stranger. Fantastic. Now look around, wave those cards, keep waving them. Have a look around. This is what it looks like to have a third of the population, one in three people, being uh, a, a stranger, being, as I say, of this uh, refugee community. So you can imagine it would have had uh, uh, a great effect, a great sort of change, bringing real positive change to the city. Welcome, stranger, indeed. The strangers brought a whole series of new skills to the city in the 16th century. New skills in weaving, and we'll see one of the uh, products that these strangers wove in a minute. We'll see that they brought new skills in printing. Uh, Norwich had a printing press in the 16th century by the time that Elizabeth came to visit, and the first book printed in Norwich was printed in Dutch. The strangers also brought this. Not the football, <laughs> but they brought the canary something which will look familiar, I think, from the Norwich City football badge. Uh, I think Norwich are playing Bristol City today. Um, and you'll see in the top corner there the arms of uh, the city as well. So you can see that uh, a little reminder of the stranger community, a little reminder of what the strangers brought to Norwich is right there and parading around every Saturday afternoon. So Norwich at this time, Norwich in our period, Norwich in 1578 was as now, a city of refuge was a city which was very, very welcoming. But I want to turn our attention to one special visitor who arrived in 1578. And the story of this visit begins with a letter sent to the mayor of Norwich. And I have this letter in my hand. Now, we need a volunteer to read this letter out. Find us a volunteer. Here's a letter. Can you find the mic? Right, now, what does this letter say? I'm to visit Norwich in a few weeks. Get the city ready. From Queen Elizabeth. P.S. I like presents. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Brilliant. I'm com coming to visit Norwich in a few weeks' time. Get the city ready from Queen Elizabeth. I like presents. Now, we need to remember that. The city of Norwich in 1578 put together a whole range of presents for Elizabeth. So, this is exciting news, people. People of Norwich, Queen Elizabeth I is coming to visit. 
Her visit of 1578 will be the first and only time that she comes to visit Norwich, so we need to be ready, and we need to put on a really, really good show. Queen Elizabeth spent a lot of time during her long reign traveling about her kingdom and staying with her subjects in big houses and in towns and cities. But as I said, in 1578, this is the only time that she comes to Norwich, the only time that she comes into Norfolk. Now, in an age before TV, before radio, before internet, before magazines, this would be the only way in which the people could see the queen, your queen. It would also be a chance for Elizabeth and her court to keep an eye on her subjects, to see that everybody across the land was keeping in line when it came to politics, religion, and money. These visits were grand occasions, bigger than any royal visit nowadays. So, people of Elizabethan Norwich, we need to get the city ready. We need to do various things. We need to think about how to prepare the city. We need to think about how to entertain Elizabeth when she arrives. We need to think who is going to do this. And we need to think about what our plan for entertainment is going to be. There's a lot of things for us to do today. But first things first, Norwich needs a mayor. And Norwich needs two sheriffs to organize things and to greet the queen. Is there anybody in the audience who thinks there'll be a good mayor or sheriff? My two volunteers will be looking for volunteers. Hands up. A mayor and two sheriffs. You've got a lot of responsibilities, but you do get to meet the queen. Okay, we have our mayor here. Round of applause for the mayor. And like all good mayors, wearing the mayor's office. And it looks like we've got two sheriffs as well. Take your seats there. Fantastic. Round of applause for the sheriffs. Okay, so we've got our mayor of Norwich and two sheriffs, just as Norwich was run in 1578. You've got your seats there, you're going to be on stage for a while, you've got a lot of responsibility, but you will be paid. <laughs> now, we need to think about how to prepare the city. Now, the mayor, thank you, had to draw up a list of things to do. We had to clean the streets, had to mend the roads, had to chase animals from the castle ditches, and they had to prepare some gifts. And the people of Norwich, you have kindly raised £100 in some rather tasty looking money here, in gold coins. This is worth about, about 20,000 pounds nowadays, so you've been very, very generous. Thank you. Now, there's one important job that uh, is also on that list. You put the next slide up. We needed, your, the document at the top is the kind of thing I spend a lot of my time reading. Now, this document says that one of the jobs that's on our list of things to do is we need to move the muck hill at Brazen Gates. There's no sewers in Norwich in 1578, and so all of Norwich's poo was kept in this uh, heap just outside Brazen Gate. This is where Sainsbury's is now, people. <laughs> so you can see that, uh, and this is where Elizabeth I is going to be coming in. That's too close for comfort for me. We're going to have to move that out of the way. And in 1578, that was certainly one of the tasks that the mayor said, we should probably be doing this. Any volunteers to move the dunghill? <laughs> You're very, very kind. Now, I'll spare you that pleasure, but if you like getting your hands dirty, you will love the next lecture. OK, now, we need a plan. What's going to happen when Elizabeth I comes to town? Well. She's going to arrive at uh, St. Stephen's Gate here. You see that the dunghill has been moved already. Very good. She's going to come up here. This is St. Stephen's Gate. She's going to walk down St. Stephen Street. We're going to entertain her in this kind of area here. She's going to walk down past Marks and Spencers, past the Puppet Man, making her way to... Uh, I don't know if he was there or not. Uh, <laughs> making her way to the marketplace. We're going to entertain her there. We're going to make her way down to St. Andrew's Hall, and then we're going to put her up in uh, the Bishop's Palace, just next to the cathedral. So how should we entertain Elizabeth? What sort of things do you think a royal visitor might like? What kind of entertainment do royal visitors like? Yeah. 
Juggling? I wish I could demonstrate juggling now. <laughs> lots of food. She certainly prepared lots of food. What else might a royal visitor like? Presents. Very, very good. What sort of entertainment should we be putting on? Poetry. We're going to certainly have some poetry. Music. Absolutely. Now, Norwich in 1578 had its own boy band. The uh, Rizzo... Here they are, the Norwich Waits. These were very, very well-paid city employees. There's five of them there. Sadly, at the moment, they are on their Christmas tour. So we need, to, uh, we need some volunteers to uh, form our impromptu band for Elizabeth's visit. First of all, we need two drummers. Could we find two drummers? Anybody thinks they can play drums? We've got instruments right here for you. There we go, there's one drum and the two drumsticks. There we go. There's your drumsticks there as well. Now, I think we need an audition. If you'd just like to give us a, a roll on the drums, we're going to audition before the mayor and sheriffs. Give us a roll on the drums, please. Mayor and sheriffs, what do you think? <laughs> Fantastic. We have our drummers. If you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to just stand behind the mayor and sheriffs there, just take a place behind the mayor and sheriffs there. Thank you very much. Now we also need two trumpeters. Who here thinks they can play the trumpet? We need two volunteers. I think we've got one there already. There's one there. Now it looks like we've got a one more trumpeter. There we go, from the back. Now the trumpet is harder to play than a drummer, but uh, we're going to audition it as well. Fantastic. Here is your instrument. There we go. Right, now... Take your place on the stage and also uh, have a try at playing. Just blow down the trumpet or give it a toot down the trumpet. Audition before the mayor. Are we ready? Let's give it, give it a go. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Superb. Are we good? They've got the part. If you'd like to t stand by the drummers, stand behind the uh, mayor and sheriff. So we've got our mayor, we've got our two sheriffs. We've got our drums, we have our trumpets. Now, we also need to put on some songs and shows for Elizabeth. We need a writer. Now, there's no shortage of creative writers here at UEA, but in 1578, Norwich invited a poet called Thomas Churchard to design their entertainments. Have we got any budding writers here? Now, in some ways, I think it'd be nice to have, to, to have an older Elizabethan to uh, play the part of Thomas Churchard. Are there any parents who might be a good poet or writer here? Here we go. Round of applause, please, for Thomas Churchyard. Fantastic. Now, you get to wear a hat. Great, thank you. And you get the, uh, as all writers, their quill as well. Now, Thomas Churchyard has very kindly written a special one-off poem for the visit of Elizabeth to Norwich. Thank you very much. And we're going to be practicing that now as a room. And... On three, I'd like us to read out this special, just about rhyming poem that uh, Thomas Churchard has written for this occasion. So, on three, we're going to read this out. 
One, two, three. The dew of heaven drops this day on dry and barren ground. Therefore, let fruitful hearts, I say, at drum and trumpet sound. Ring out the bells, pluck up your spirits, and dress your houses well. Run in for flowers to strew the streets and make joyful hearts to swell. Now to Norwich, here the wellspring runs, whose virtue still does flow. And lo, this day does shine two suns within your walls also. Well done, people of Norwich. Thank you, Thomas Churchyard. Take your place behind the Mary Sheriffs. Fantastic. Now, the song, the poem that Churchyard wrote refers to uh, strewing the streets with flowers. And uh, we're certainly going to be able to do this. But I think for you to have your own involvement in preparing the streets of Norwich for Elizabeth, we're going to get you to make a Tudor rose yourselves. And this will be a souvenir for you to take home from the visit of Elizabeth to Norwich. Now, you should all have in front of you two pieces of paper. You're going to be making the Tudor rose. Now, this is what it should look like. Now, the way to go about doing this, and I put together a little video as well, what you're going to do is you're going to take your red piece of paper here. Now, on top of that, you're going to put your white piece of paper. And then you're going to take your finger and push it down the middle, pushing the two pieces together. You all got that? And then the bit underneath, you're going to twist. And it should look like this. Some of the older Elizabethans might want to help the younger Elizabethans. Now, have you all made your Tudor roses or busy making your Tudor roses? So you're going to be able to keep hold of those for when Elizabeth comes, and this will be your souvenir to take away with you. But we also need to strew the streets for when Elizabeth I comes to visit. So we're going to need two volunteers to uh, strew the streets with flowers for when she arrives. There's a bucket either side. Okay. Okay, now, we need to be thinking about presents for Elizabeth. Thank you very much to our two strewers. You're going to have a part to play when Elizabeth comes to town. So we've got our Tudor roses, we've got our music. We need to think about presents for Elizabeth. We know that she likes presents, but we've got two problems here. What do you get the person who owns the kingdom? And how do you present her with a gift? Now, in 1578, the people of Norwich uh, pre presented special symbolic gifts. And these symbolic gifts are going to be given to Elizabeth by our mayor and sheriffs. And we're going to be reflecting some of her special characteristics. So we've got various gifts here. Now, I'd like to give this to the mayor. This is a special orb, which looks like a chocolate orange, I know. This is an orb which represents Elizabeth's uh, sovereignty and her powers of rule. Now, when Elizabeth arrives, I'm going to ask you to give that to her. Thank you very much. Now, she was also given a dove, which represented her kindness and her love of peace as a ruler. If you would like to give the dove to Elizabeth when she arrives. She was also given a book representing her intelligence and her learning. If you would like to give uh, the book to Elizabeth when she arrives. Now... Those of you that had a welcome stranger card, the stranger community also got to uh, give a gift to Elizabeth. So if there's anybody here that has a welcome stranger card, 
Wave it in the air. If you would like to uh, donate this special piece of handicraft. Thank you very much to our stranger, who is this lovely piece of local textiles there. Now, I think we're almost ready. We just need to make sure that we need to how to greet a king or queen when they arrive. Uh, we need to be able to bow or to curtsy. I think we are ready for the arrival of Queen Elizabeth I. Are we ready? So we've got our mayor, we've got our sheriffs, we've got the poem which is written right, Thomas Churchyard. We've got our musicians. Give us another toot on the, uh, on the drums and on the, on the trumpets. Very, very good. I think we are ready for the royal arrival. People of Norwich, greet your Queen, Queen Elizabeth I. Screw those flowers. Keep cheering, this is the only time that you'll see her. Keep waving. Very good. Musicians, roll on the drums. Blow the drum. There we go. Your Majesty. Fantastic. Please take your throne, Your Majesty. Welcome to Norwich. Thank you. The people of Norwich have kindly gathered up some, uh, some gifts for you. <gasps> Very good. I like gifts. We read your letter, Your Majesty. Now, we've also prepared uh, a whole range of special gifts uh, suiting your special qualities. Now, the Mayor of Norwich has uh, a gift for you. If, Mayor, if you'd like to present your gift to Elizabeth I. <gasps> what a wondrous, glistening thing this is. An orb. How wonderful. How I'll take that from you. The orb representing Elizabeth's sense of majesty and her power and sovereignty. Now, we also have presented a dove representing the love of peace. If you'd like to present your dove to your majesty. Oh, thank you. Yes, peace is a great quality for this kingdom. I thank, thank you, you very much. Our third sheriff has presented a book representing your love of learning, Your Majesty. Thank you very much. Oh, One well, of your favourite you. authors, I think. Indeed, learning is everything. Thank I you thank very you. much. Now, our representative from the stranger community has uh, put together a wonderful gift here. Ah. Oh. Fine textiles. <laughs> this city is well known for such things. Ah, and bright colours as well. The dyers have been busy. They have indeed. What a fine thing this is. Most strange heraldry, not one I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, we've also been preparing... Uh, well, Thomas Churchard has kindly written a song for your arrival, and the people of Norwich have been busy rehearsing that, so people of Norwich, if you'd all like to uh, sing again the song that we put together for your arrival. On three, are we ready? One, two, three. The dew of heaven drops this day on dry and barren ground. 
Therefore, let fruitful hearts, I say, at drum and trumpet sound, ring out the bells, pluck up your spirits, and dress your houses well. Run in for flowers to strew the streets, and make joyful hearts to swell. O oh, Norwich, here the wellspring runs, whose virtue still does flow, and lo, this day to shine two suns within your walls also. Thank you very much. Take a bow, Thomas Churchyard. Now, Elizabeth stayed in Norwich for six whole days and enjoyed a range of more music, more pageants, and a whole series of more gifts. And on her last day in town, she was greeted with a dance of, or a show of dancing fairies just at the bottom of what is now Grapes Hill. Now, before leaving, Elizabeth knighted the mayor. So, if I could uh, impress upon your majesty to, uh, if the mayor would like to come forward, I'm going to ask you to knight the mayor of Norwich. Very big responsibility here. Take a knee. In the name of God, St. Michael, and St. George, I give you the right to bear arms and to protect my subjects. Arise. Round of applause for the newly knighted mayor. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. Now, We've come to the end of Elizabeth's rather short visit to Norwich. Uh, before she left, she was uh, rather tearful, and she got to declare uh, her parting words to Norwich. I shall never forget Norwich. Round of applause to your sovereign. That is very kind, Your Majesty. Now, in 1578, Elizabeth kept the gifts that uh, we uh, kindly prepared for her. But as you would have seen on your desks in front of you, she has decided to return, because it's Christmas, the largesse, the gifts, the money that you've gathered up for her. So thank you very much, Your Majesty. Now. Before Elizabeth leaves, we just need to uh, say thank you very much to our mayor, our sheriffs, our musicians, our stranger, and Thomas Churchyard. And thank you very much to our two strewers. You can all, you're discharged of your duties. You may now return to Norwich. Thank you very much to all our volunteers. And now we've come to that sad moment. where Elizabeth has to leave Norwich. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. I hope you've enjoyed your visit here. And Merry Christmas. And a very Merry Christmas to you all. Give her a cheer as you leave. Wonderful. Now, let us recap what we have covered and learnt today. We have seen what Norwich looked like in 1578. That's right. We have seen how welcoming it was to the stranger community from the Dutch and French-speaking community. We've seen how Norwich got ready for the arrival of Queen Elizabeth I. Lots of cleaning up, lots of preparation to be done. We've seen how the mayor and sheriffs prepared a whole lot of gifts for the Queen and the special way in which we had to present these symbolic gifts. The orb, the dove, the book, and the gift from the stranger community. And we've seen how she showed her gratitude to the mayor and people of Norwich. 
I hope that you've enjoyed learning about what happened when Elizabeth came to Norwich in 1578 and finding out about the history of Tudor Norwich. I'd like to thank you very much for coming and I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much.